screen here. Okay. Hey, so we're here with Reverend Scott Rogers, Executive Director of ABCCM, and uh, we're doing a special edition uh, from WPVM to let people know what services are available and who's doing their best to help people get through this unprecedented time that we're in. And uh, so Reverend Scott Rogers, I just ask you uh, what all ABCCM is doing and you started a long litany and uh, then we went live. So begin again, telling people what ABCCM is doing and also uh, which are the churches that are involved in this? Sure. Well, it's such a joy to be with you this morning. Thank you. Ryan, and uh, thank you again for sharing this story and what churches and the faith community are doing. So uh, the Asheville Buncombe Community Christian Ministry, finally known as ABCCM, uh, is supported by about 300 congregations. So mostly mainline uh, Catholic Protestant churches, uh, you know, your, your usual denominations of Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, uh, and our wonderful Catholic brothers and sisters, as well as uh, other faith groups. Uh, so we have both temples have been very much involved with us. Uh, you know, the synagogues here locally, as well as uh, other groups in the community. We have over uh, 5,000 volunteers. Wow. Uh, so it helps you understand the, the reach and scope. So when I say to you that we have these crisis ministries around the county, north, south, east, west, you may, and the east, uh, well, north is North Samaritan Ministry, east is Swannanoa Valley Christian Ministry, south is just ABCCM South, and Candler is ABCCM Harmony Valley, and our and then our downtown crisis center. So, so how did ABCCM get started? When did you get started? Yeah, we got started in 69, around just offering uh, time to listen, some food, a cup of coffee, uh, and cool water that really grew out of that civil rights movement and uh, where we said, how can churches fill the gaps? You know, there were a lot of families knocking on doors. And so one family might get help from 10 churches and nine families not get help at all because they already helped. And so the pastors, uh, men and women came together from uh, churches embracing that Matthew 25 scripture Lord, when did we uh, help our neighbor in need? And said, well, first let's sit down and over a cup of coffee or a glass of water and talk and listen to one another and started helping with food and then clothes. Uh, that grew, uh, quite frankly, into then a jail ministry and prison ministry. And we encourage folks to go and listen and share in the jails and prisons. Uh, by 1984, five, we had a crisis with the mentally ill being deinstitutionalized and homeless numbers on our streets. We actually had a homeless veteran named J.D. Buckner who froze to death down on Lexington Avenue in a late April uh, freeze and snow. And you know, the church has rallied and said, we don't want anybody to freeze to death on our streets again. And so while we had helped, got, uh, helped the rescue mission get started, helped Meals on Wheels get started, helped Mana Food Bank get started, uh, the ministry said, well, when did we take in the stranger? And so we began taking care of men and women on the streets, taking them all in. Uh, a downtown businessman, Robert Armstrong, provided a, a warehouse that we renovated. 
And then, of course, it wasn't long with many of the cook teams and nurses and doctors coming in that they said, you know, some of these men and women are really sick. Uh, I'll never forget uh, Dr. Phil Blake uh, picking up a little boy that had come in with his mother. And he said, Scott, we've got to start a clinic because this child is so malnourished. So the medical ministry got started in 91. Uh, the shelter grew so much that women and children needed their own space by 2001. And we opened Steadfast House uh, with 50 beds for women and children, still the largest uh, women and children's facility in the county. And then uh, in 2008, uh, we found that most of the men we were serving were veterans. And so we opened a veterans restoration quarters by buying an old motel out in Oteen. And it is now the largest uh, veterans facility. And then we began adding job training services uh, and homeless prevention services in 2012 and began a whole housing first program for veterans. Now we serve uh, 49 counties across North Carolina. Uh, we'll put a thousand veterans back into the workforce when it opens up again this year. Uh, we will prevent evictions for upwards of uh, seven, eight hundred families. We operate a call center for veterans all across Western North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, so in our program of uh, North Carolina serves, uh, that's on regularly on Thursday mornings. That's right. We, ha we have um, people come in uh, that, are, and I think it's. Uh, I think ABCCM is kind of the umbrella right. uh, of NC Serves, That's correct. and Order. and the um, services that are available for the veterans through ABCCM are really incredible. So, how are things going uh, now that we're in this pand pandemic situation? What is ABCCM doing? And if people who hear this broadcast need some assistance, how do they get in touch with you? Well, we certainly want folks who need assistance, uh, particularly with food or if they're uninsured, to get in touch with one of our crisis ministries or our medical ministry. So any of these crisis ministries, mainly what we're doing right now is filling the gap for food. Uh, our numbers have doubled in the last month. We've gone from 85 families a day to upwards of 160 a day at all of our crisis ministry sites, uh, which means that nobody is, is overwhelmed at this point in time, but we're there to fill the gaps. We're really thankful that a lot of folks who have been unemployed, have gone ahead and signed up for unemployment. They signed up for food stamps. That's helping to cushion uh, the blow, but there are still gaps. Sometimes there's a lag of a week or two weeks. And ABCCM for over 50 years has been there to help fill those gaps uh, through our many churches uh, and the community that supports us. So uh, we are uh, trying to prepare as we speak though, because as we heard this morning on the national news, a lot of folks are behind on their mortgages by a month. Some folks are also behind on their rent payments. And uh, so we know that folks as the economy gets going again are going to face some new challenges. But we also want to help people stay healthy. You know, the most important thing is to stay healthy. And during this season of allergies and folks that might be doing yard work and getting rashes or other infections, they might look like uh, they are uh, getting the virus when it's really something else. And 
So we've been very fortunate to be able to keep the clinic open at 155 Livingston Street. Uh, you can call our main number 828-259-5300 and our receptionist will be happy to direct you to whichever one of the ministries that can help you. So how many churches are, are associated with ABCCM? Approximately. So there's about 300 churches uh, last year, including churches that came and helped from outside the area. There were over 400 uh, who brought in about a thousand uh, missions, uh, trips, uh, college kids, high school kids that were also doing mission projects. Uh, all of that has been halted for now. Uh, but we Right now, uh, when you think about that, we're giving away food for a family of four that usually is anywhere from three to four boxes of food to help them through that gap. That's 900 a week or more. Uh, we're doing 1,100 meals a day. That's 300 who are living at our both of our facilities, 250 men. 50 women and children, plus our kitchen makes an additional 200 meals to feed the homeless downtown. That's 1,100 meals a day. And then our pharmacy and clinic are giving away literally two to 3,000 scripts a week. Uh, really being out there, uh, excuse me, about 1,000 scripts a week, excuse me. That's I over exaggerated a little bit there, but that's a lot of help for people to stay stable, stay healthy and stay well. And so tell us how you got started in this. Well, I was fortunate uh, back in 1981, uh, the ministry was looking for someone who had four to six years in the pulpit and I'd served a couple of rural churches uh, but I'd also done training uh, around marriage and family therapy work and had done some work with Goodwill. So they wanted somebody who had four to six years in the pulpit, four years in human services, and two years of administration. And I'll never forget getting a letter from my dad opening up and seeing the job advertisement. And at the bottom, he wrote, I think this is you. <laughs> and so, so you I, got that seal of approval there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, God uh, really did lay out for me at an early age uh, a fit where I was a part of the ministry when it was just a small crisis ministry downtown and the jail ministry, and we've grown up together. Uh, creating opportunities for the churches and volunteers to really engage with their neighbors and their schools. For example, uh, we've really engaged with the city and county schools on identifying all the homeless children and their families. And then we have been sending out vouchers uh, for food for them to come and pick up to help supplement uh what they may not have on the weekends and so it's exciting the uh, churches are also involved with schools but it's a way for the churches to come together collectively and meet a huge volume of needs that they couldn't necessarily do on their own right, right. it also gives pastors a way to say if you lost your job in the church this is our ministry. It is our place to help you. And so uh, I talked with a pastor this morning uh, about a woman who uh, was afraid about being evicted, had not asked for help before. And, you know, so he assured her, uh, her name is on a list uh, waiting for her when she goes to the crisis ministry. And they're going to welcome her and say, Gail, we're glad you're here. And so 
that's how closely we work together. So uh, how does, so uh, Reverend Rogers, how does someone who is in need uh, and in this situation, there's probably a lot of people getting in dire need. How do they get yeah. in touch with ABCCM? Well, thank you for asking. The simplest way is just to pick up the phone and call us at 259-5300. Find out which crisis ministry is closest to you. Uh, we ask that you simply come on down and come see us. Uh, you'll be greeted out in the parking lot. You don't even have to get out of your car. Uh, we'd like for you to bring some ID and, and, uh, but you're going to get on the phone and you're going to talk with a volunteer counselor or a staff counselor in our crisis ministry. Uh, the same would be true at the medical clinic. If uh, you had need, you would simply go down to the parking lot area. You'll be uh, greeted, given a, a number or come up to uh, get in line with proper distancing. And again, you'll be able to either call in and we do a lot of telemedicine or speak with a physician. Uh, we have a very sterile airlock situation where we keep everybody safe uh, but can see the physician uh, and talk with them uh, directly through a protective glass and uh, get the help and medicine that you need. So. It's a really uh, safe way for folks to be with us. Uh, folks that just need food, we uh, are happy to assist. We want to know how many are in your family. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that if you don't know about food stamps and uh, what's called the SNAP program now, uh, that you know how to get signed up for that uh, and acquire those benefits because every little bit helps people piece it together. And if someone in the community wants to volunteer to help uh, with ABCCM's vast programs, uh, who do they get in touch with and how do yeah. they, how do they get involved? Yes. Oh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, first of all, uh, we encourage folks to get involved the same way. They can call that number, 259-5300, and say, I'd like to talk with someone about volunteering. Each ministry has a volunteer coordinator. Uh, folks can also go online at abccm.org uh, and scroll through the different ministries. There's a little video showing each ministry. The only one that is closed right now is our jail ministry. The sheriff is not allowing anybody in the jails at this time, but that will change. And they can simply also uh, send an email to volunteer at abccm.org. Very so, good. Simple enough. Yes, simple enough. Well, volunteer. I'm, I'm, I'm so... Um encouraged to hear all the services that ABCCM has for the community and uh, and uh, we'll be uh, we're airing this live on Facebook but I'll also be airing this interview on the radio uh, at different times so different people it'll the the information will hit different people at different times so I want to thank you Reverend Scott Rogers with uh, ABCCM, the executive director. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the community. And uh, we've been honored to have you on. And um, we look forward to getting to the other side of this pandemic situation and things getting back to normal. That's right. Well, and just remember that a few dollars on the website, uh, pick up a few extra cans, goods of food or staples. Uh, they can also be dropped off at any of those sites or locations, and you too can be a part of helping to feed your neighbors in need. Thank you. Well, so much. Thank, thank you very much. All right.